In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take the second look in a two-part tutorial related to using the position keyframe to move an object around the screen. This applies to a static object like the baseball you see on the screen here. It can apply to a video clip. It can apply to a title and more. But we're going to control the position. And as we looked at before, you move your time indicator or scrubber where you want and then you click a diamond to set a keyframe and the easiest way to set a keyframe at another location is first of all decide how many frames or seconds apart you want them to be and then all you need to do is move the object and it will set a keyframe at that location to set another keyframe make sure that you move your time indicator and then we'll move it over a little bit to the left here and so when we look at the cumulative effect on this, we play our clip, it moves to the upper right, and then over. And then since it's the last keyframe, it controls the remainder of the object and the duration of the clip. A couple of things we'd like to show you in addition is how can you freeze a keyframe on the screen? For example, let me move with my arrow key to the second keyframe. Let's say before we move to the third location, which is over here, we actually want to freeze the value that we have in the second location. So I have to decide again how long. I'm going to move the, actually move the third one over a bit. We'll move back to the second one. Let's say we want this to hang on the screen and not move for about two seconds. So right now I'm at one second, 27 frames. Let's go to 3 seconds and 27 frames. And now I have a 2 second gap. Now what I can do is already begun to move between point this keyframe and that keyframe. I want to right click and say duplicate previous keyframe. I could duplicate the next one as well. But I'll do duplicate previous. Watch it moved. So what it says was I'm going to copy the value of the previous keyframe in terms of my X and Y positions, my coordinates that you see on the screen there. So this is a way to lock the position on the screen before it moves to another keyframe. So we'll go ahead and play this and you'll see the difference. It moves and it locks for two seconds and then it moves. So that's a nice way to control that. Now, if you want also to remove all keyframes and start over, you have simply this remove all keyframes and that will get you started from scratch. Let's go ahead and move our ball to the upper left and set a keyframe at the beginning and we'll move into our project and we're going to set another keyframe. I've got my time indicator over here. All I need to do is move it and now it will move from the upper left to the upper right. But let me show you another feature. If I right click on my keyframe, I have an ease in and ease out. Now the ease out is grayed out because I have no subsequent keyframes. Ease in is what I call a soft landing. Ease out is what I call a soft launch. Notice I'm going to click on ease in and we'll go back and we'll play the clip. And it moves rapidly, but notice at the very end, it kind of puts the brakes on. It's a nice, soft ending. We'll play it again so you can see it. Constant speed, but then at the very end, it slows down. That's what Ease In does. We also have an Ease Out. I'll right-click here on my first keyframe, and I can do an Ease Out. And in this case, it will start slow then have a constant speed and the other one is still functioning then it will ease in at the second one so let's play that slow steady and then brakes or soft landing so i could go back to this one here and turn it off and in this case it will ease out but it won't necessarily ease in soft launch and steady kind of a harder ending so if you want to soften the movement of an object uh, at the beginning or end of its trajectory, you can use the Ease In and Ease Out. Let me show you something else about these keyframes. We're, we're back at the first one. Let's change the location actually off the screen. Now, 
this is a, a nice way to make an effect of something that appears coming in from outside. I'll play it and now all of a sudden the ball appears from nowhere and it winds up on the screen. You can also, we'll stop this, we'll take our second keyframe and we'll make it go off on the other side. So we'll pa pause this, play it again, and now when we preview it the ball appears and it moves from invisible to invisible completely off the screen. It's a nice way to control motion and you can combine things. Let me take the ball and start it way off the screen in the lower left and we'll set a keyframe over here and on this keyframe we want the ball to be at the top near the center. And then I'm going to do what we showed a moment ago. I'll set another keyframe and now I'll right click and we'll duplicate the previous one so we have the same value here. It will freeze in this time. And then I'm going to take my last keyframe and move it tighter and keep it off the screen. So it should come on very abruptly. I'm going to even shorten the distance between these two. Very abruptly, freeze in the middle, and then pop off on the right. Let's see if indeed it does that. Okay, so you can control both the speed of the motion, the location of the motion, and actually how long it's on the screen. Keyframing positions is very valuable. You can do all kinds of creative things with it using these tools that you find as you control the location of an object at a uh, certain moment in your project with position keyframes.